What we like in a smell is determined by our culture and environment. Making scent for Western tastes used to be easy, but things are changing. The European business and the American business have not enjoyed tremendous success over the last few years, and these other regions are exploding. But the new customers don't all want the same thing. The Russians want rich and heavy. The Chinese crave light and airy, and the Brazilians go bananas for fruits. You wouldn't use that in a perfume, would you? I would. I would. What we want in a perfume depends on where we are, but also when we are. In Arabia, they lust for musky oriental scents that were all the rage in Victorian England. I brought some treasure to show you, the best of English perfumery. The tastes of London, Paris and New York will soon count for little. What we smell like in the future is more likely to be dictated by the customers of Shanghai, Mumbai and Sao Paulo. Ah. Anne Gottlieb's nose is small but influential. She's a predictor of global scent tastes. Then see if you can make it at three and, and if we can get the test at nine. The Manhattan-based grandmother works regularly for a top designer we can't name. His perfumers are developing a new fragrance aimed at Chinese women, whose tastes are changing fast. You seem very thoughtful. I'm really concerned about the viability of this fragrance. As much as I love it and, and the direction in which it's going, um, Asia is a very important market for us, and I don't know whether or not this is going to work there. I just am not sure it'll work there. Here, this is the more different woody note. This is more yeah. ambrox. This right. is more woody, vetiver, cedar, this kind of woodiness. So this is the same as I'm wearing yes. with a tweak on top. Just There's a big sociological piece of what I do in understanding what the tastes of the women of India and the men of India are, what the tastes of the Chinese are. I'm not sure. I'm Smell. not sure. No. OK, come back again. Yeah. What happens here for me is that I go back into a little bit of that animalic dirtiness, mm -hmm. which I don't in the wrist. I so I think what I would like to do is take that and that. Okay. Because for me, those are the two that maintain the integrity of the fragrance that I love. Fans in Europe and North America might also like this perfume, but they're not going to get a sniff of it. Because specific regions are such lucrative businesses, yes, specific fragrances would be created by him for those regions. And not available here in North America or in Europe? Um, probably not. What we are doing now are regional fragrances that are available only in certain locations. It's my responsibility to make sure that a fragrance that is supposed to be region appropriate is so. Gottlieb's office on Central Park is filled with trophies. For four decades, big name clients have had huge successes following her advice on Western tastes. These days, her nose takes her east and south. Gottlieb isn't limited to fine fragrance. Thanks to her, adolescent youth the world over smells pungently sexy. One of the projects that I've worked on, and I've worked on it for 20 years, is Axe, the body spray. That we call Lynx. That you call Lynx in the UK. It is targeted really to teenage boys yes. and I feel very much like its mother and we do a new one every year and we get them pretty right. Historically, Lynx scents have been tuned to European tastes but Anne's going to change that. The brand's HQ is in London and that's where she's heading. 
On the banks of the River Thames sit the offices where the future of lynx or axe is planned. Teenage scent tastes change fast, and there's a new body spray every year. It's worn by boys all over the world, but Gottlieb knows that the smell of the next one will be dictated by just one territory. There is one country, one country, that matters more to lynx and to axe than any other, and that's Brazil. They are fragrance literate and they love fragrance. So the potential is huge there, probably bigger than any other region in the world. For brand manager Russell Taylor, there are practical reasons why the spray does so well in Brazil. What we find in a lot of our Latin American markets is that they use more product. They want fresher fragrances and they shower more as well. So the usage occasions in hotter climates are very, very different from, uh, from the colder climates. And that's effectively where the, the drive of growth on the brand comes from. Three teams of perfumers are in competition. This group believes they've got Brazil bottled. This is a coveted brief. This represents a lot of money. Um, to the house that wins. And if they hear that their fragrances are not loved or that they're not promising, it's very disappointing for them. There's a good chance we'll, there will be tears. We are um, at, the, at this point in our evaluation where um, I know that we're not so happy. And so we would like to take a look at where we are here. Let's just smell, okay? We are designing a product that is specifically for a 16 to 25 year old consumer. You would tend to do a product that would smell young. Um, someone in this room is fascinated with the coconut part. <laughs> Brazilians love fruity ingredients. They love floral ingredients. So that what I am looking for captures that, but also something that really is tasty and yummy, and yet decidedly masculine. Do you want to smell both themes, maybe on skin? Oh, de let's definitely go to skin, yes. And I'm so happy that you brought skin with you, so. Oh, it is. Yeah. The skin executive represents a teenage boy. He's probably lived on pot noodles and gone without showers for a week. Okay, let's have a look. Coconut is a yummy ingredient. Um, what I would really love to do to keep the fragrance sophisticated is find a way of sort of wrapping it so that the sweetness so much isn't there. What if we mix the two? Pierre, come smell and see if you think it would work. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it's pretty feasible. Fragrance development is a journey. We're on a journey here. If we make this one-dimensional, then obviously we will fail, but you won't make it one-dimensional. And I think the magic now we need to see coming through from you is something that you want to smell and smell and smell and smell. Our guys are going to remember this fragrance. Exactly. You know, you guys need to do a lot more work, yeah? So let's, let's not be lazy now and say, oh, this is it, yeah? But I think, please, you know, work on the sophistication so we don't come across as being too cheap. It's worth the pain. The contract for just one new version will pay millions. It's a global brand and uh, it's a, a huge, huge, huge contract for us. So to win it, um, we have a pretty big party. Gottlieb still has to see the competing teams. Then she'll go to Brazil to ask teenagers for their opinion. It seems as though that, that there's quite a lot of work still to be done, though. Well, there certainly is. We aren't finished with the process at all. And the next few weeks are a crunch period for all of us. I will be meeting with the fragrance houses on a, a, a few days a week um, as they create, I evaluate, they go back again, create again. It, it's a, a, an elaborate process. Mm. And I will be taking to Brazil um, what I hope will be one single can of fragrance and relying on the data that comes out of this to tell us whether or not we have a fragrance that's done.
Brazil's opinion matters. It's the fastest growing fragrance market on earth. The people love anything perfumed. The latest craze is for tutti frutti scented footwear. Everyone who can spends something on scented products, from perfume to air fresheners. To cap it all, when the temperature soars and the humidity gets too much, they shower it off and start all over again. For the fragrance industry, Brazil is the perfect storm. Even car dealers are fragrance obsessed. This is the Aston Martin scent. Everyone coming to our showrooms will smell the scent. We can give them a, a, a small bottle for free. Not for free, you know. <laughs> Nothing is free. Brazil used to be politically unstable, which made foreign investors wary. But all that's changed. So we are in business for about three months. Initially, we thought uh, we had a market in Brazil for around uh, 25 units a year. But uh, to our surprise, we sold already 25 in less than uh, three months. They know that when they buy one car like this, they are paying more taxes than the value of the car. But they still want to have uh, one of these babies. The whole country is coming up. We're having a lot more people in this country uh, move to the uh, middle class. Things are looking up, for some. Most people can't afford a bicycle, let alone an Aston Martin. But everybody wants a piece of Brazil's new wealth. Those who aren't rich can at least smell as though they are. But not with posh perfumes. The real money isn't in eau de toilette, it's in toilet cleaner. The big chemical companies are climbing over each other to make Latin bathrooms and kitchens rainforest fresh. Flavia Motta works for the biggest fragrance corporation of all, Givadin. OK, so here we are. For her, every day is laundry day. So different types of washing machines. So we have top loads that are very common in Brazil. Not so common in Brazil, the front loads. We also use drying machines. We wash towels with different fragrances in all these machines so that then we can compare how we perceive this fragrance in the different moments, in the different washing phases. When we pour the product inside the machine, when it is soaking, then when it's washing, after when the cycle finishes to make sure that the fragrance develops, performs in the best way in all these moments. Because all of them are very important for the performance of the product. But there are some that are what we call the, the magical moments. The magical moments. The magical moments, the ones that are the key ones for the decision on a product. So this is one of the magical moments when we talk about the detergent powders. The cycle has just finished. I open the machine, I take it out, smell it in this way. Is that the magical moment there? That's, That's one of those. Yes, job well done. There's a, a very touching story. When once in a visit up north to very low income consumers, it was a couple with four kids. The six of them would share the two beds. And although she was extremely poor, one of the best moments in her day was when they went to bed. And I said, why? Why is that? Because she owned just one bed sheet for each bed. But she would wash it every day. This washing powder would make the bed sheet very clean and above all perfumed. It was a way for her to, of inclusion to be able to afford if she could not afford